Those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about it. Can you stop? Ooh, wait. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you are wide awake after the late game. Well, depending on where you were. For me, um, it was 2 o'clock when I got to bed last night. By the time I ended up doing the game, shutting down everything here doing the fireside chat with the game balls and getting that uploaded and everything else and uh, i slept till about nine o'clock today that's right i laid in the bed i laid in the bed y'all because i needed some rest but we are up we are about and we are talking about the dallas cowboys and their preseason game now let me say before anybody starts talking about we going to the super bowl we, that, that, them boys, them boys, man, we look so good. Oh, my God. Let me say, we were playing a preseason game without our horses. I know some of you will say, well, damn, we were playing against the starters there the first half. And that guy, Trey Lance, oh, my God, Trey Lance, he is the boss. What, what, just imagine we get C.D. Lamb out there and we end up getting, uh, you know, uh, 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 Jalen Tolbert and stuff out there. And we get Brandon Cooks and Zeke, man, we going to be unstoppable to the Super Bowl. And I say, we sitting here talking about a practice game, not a real game. We sitting here. I supposed to be the franchise player. We, we talking about a practice about game. Practice. Not not a real I mean, game. Listen, we talking about We talking about practice. a practice game. Not a game. Not 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 a real game. Not a real game. We talking about a practice game. That's what we're talking about. But with that being said, with us playing against the Raiders, although I'm, I'm just Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. Come on guys. Let, let's pump the brakes. Pump the brakes a little bit here. And the Raiders are a team that's basically starting all over. They are rebuilding the team. They are not a powerhouse. The Cowboys, second string, took advantage of the first string, which is definitely hopeful here for us because we had a lot of great things. And I'm going to say, is there a quarterback controversy now in Dallas? Yeah, I said it. I said it. I'm going to get on the trigger tray bandwagon now. I said it. Is there a quarterback controversy now brewing after Trey Lance got his second start with the Cowboys? Well, excuse me, he didn't start. His second game with the Dallas Cowboys. He looked more comfortable there. He was better. He was really good at running the football again. Four carries, 36 yards, looking good. Uh, Passing-wise, he didn't challenge down the field a lot. He had 15 receptions uh, for 151 yards uh, out of 23 passing. He had the TD pass. He had the TD run. He is becoming a weapon. And I dare say that the Dallas Cowboys, when you look at it, it's an embarrassment of riches at quarterback in comparison to some teams like, say, I don't know, the New York Giants. Yeah, right now you have to say Trey Lance is better than Danny Dimes, who's getting $40 million a year. But yes, I think there might be a quarterback controversy now in Dallas. I think people will start looking and saying, maybe Trey Lance can be number two. That he has turned the narrative around because it looked like, well, first of all, let's say this. But difference between him being the starter and challenging Dak, that, that's dead. That's gone. That, that's not happening. That's not happening. But Trey Lance now, and I can guarantee you this is what's happening in Jerry Jones's mind, is saying, okay, this might be a guy that we can develop that he does have some things about. Now, before you guys go crazy and say he's ready to go, again, we're talking about the Raiders that are not a good team. There were plays, and you're going to say, well, you're just hating on him because you're a Dak fan. No. Let's be honest here. There were some passes. He still lets the ball sail, and he ends up getting guys up high that he's going to get killed. 
when you get some of the head hunting safeties out there and cornerbacks and stuff, and these guys are going having to stretch up and get them or to come back, they are going to be left wide open. When a wide receiver is reaching back here for a ball like this, this whole side is exposed. And let a linebacker come through there and clean those ribs up. He's got to work on ball placement. He's very, very raw, but does have potential. And I'll dare say that if the Cowboys decide, if the Cowboys decide that we can trade him, his stock definitely went up. It may be there's a player that they need that might take him over the hump that they can use him for trading for. Because right now, you have to look around on some of the teams. He was better than Gardner Minichu and, and Aiden O'Connell there with the Raiders. Uh, he was definitely better than Daniel Jones. I didn't watch all the games and stuff yesterday, but you felt like, okay, Trey Lance, all right, maybe this was a good pick for the Cowboys. And maybe he'll end up being the best one of that class that got traded and moved around and so on. You know, like Zach Wilson and things. He's definitely been better than Zach Wilson and stuff. And maybe the Cowboys don't look quite as stupid giving up the fourth round pick for him. Now, if we're looking at this and saying things that were great, I'm going to say it's amazing how things turned around in a matter of three weeks. Three weeks ago, I remember hearing 105 The Fan reporting and saying that, you know, Tyler Guyton, you know, Tyler Guyton is, you know, he, he's not going to start training camp. Chimo Igoda is going to be the starter starting in camp and maybe day one starter to start the season. That Tyler Guyton, he's got a long way to go. He got a long way to go. And lo and behold, Igoda has injured his foot. Going to have surgery. Going to start the season on injured reserve. Um, and Tyler Guyton is getting to the point where you're going to say Tyron Smith who? He's that big, that strong, and moves that well. That the Cowboys may not skip a beat at left tackle. And that Cooper Beebe, who literally was working. See, and I'm going to say, this is my thing here. Forgive me, I, I have sinus issues so i have a lot of congestion all the time okay um i'm old and you know when you get old when you get past 50 those of you who aren't 50 yet you'll understand when you get 50 that your warranty gets up and shit just starts breaking down okay cooper bb who was struggling at first when camp started with his shotgun snaps and brock hoffman looked like it was already, you know, anointed as the starting center. Cooper Beebe, who was literally snapping the football to anybody he could, getting in the extra work. And this is what I always say. Hard work. There is no secret to being successful in anything. Hard work pays off. I should be a poster child for this because when you look at me, a guy who's up here snorting on the mic, a guy who cannot pronounce names correctly, okay, who is old as shit, okay? When Law Nation says, man, you know, I'm really old, and he's only 42, I'm like, bro, the time between you and me is old enough for a kid to be get his driver's license. Yeah. Yeah, I can say I'm old. This stuff is it's not supposed to work. For me, I'm not good with the computer. I'm not good with electronics. I can't pronunciate things. But, but, I bust my ass. And that's the difference. As opposed to other people saying, oh man, well you got this and you got that. I got it because I worked for it. And you could too if you weren't worried about what I have or what I'm doing. You put in the work, you get results. Game Time Brian is a perfect example of that. Game Time Brian, he's an angry mailman. He's not that good looking. He's not that bright. But he's growing like crazy. No disrespect. No disrespect. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm paying you a compliment about how hard you're working. <sighs> Cooper Beebe was literally snapping the football to anybody and everybody. 
including his mama. Thank God for mama, because mama has helped out. Because when he got his opportunity last week, they looked and they said, hmm, he's doing a little better than we thought. Maybe this guy's a gamer. And he got the opportunity last night to start. And lo and behold, as we have gone through and we've talked about how bad our running game is going to be and how old we are and how we need a Saquon Barkley and everything else, we had an incredible running game last night. Incredible. And it wasn't one guy in particular. So when you look at this and you say, everybody averaged, you know, great numbers that maybe it wasn't just the running back that it was the offensive line that the offensive line was moving bodies Trey Lance 7 carries 34 yards including a TD 4.9 yard average Deuce is loose Deuce Vaughn who got the message that he might be on the bubble and needed to get the work in Deuce Five carries, 34 yards, 6.8 yards per average carry. Bro. Bro. Royce Freeman, seven carries, 32 yards, 4.6. Jared uh, Jared Connor, five carries, 15 yards, three-yard average. Malik Davis, he ended up having the, the, the tough yards for the Cowboys. Five carries, 14 yards, 2.8. That's about the low point that right there. So you look at that and say, the Cowboys were really able to run the football very effectively to the point of being able to rush for 137 yards. Which, now this is where people are going to say, you're just a Trey Lance hater. No, I'm not a Trey Lance hater. Trey Lance played better this week. One, because he was more comfortable. And two, because we were able to run the football better. The Cowboys were a balanced offense last night. 157 yards passing, 137 yards running the football. Not incredible numbers, not a 500-yard gain by any stretch of the imagination. It was a preseason game. But it was ball control. When you could pick up chunk yards in the running game and you got second down and four, it's a lot easier than second and 11. So that was a good game plan, and it was a good job by the offensive line. So you have to feel happy about this. And some of the things that you've heard from the talking heads about the Cowboys season, that you know you lost Tyron Smith, you lost Biotish and things. Your offensive line is going to be terrible. Your running game, oh, man, you got old-ass Zeke Elliott. You know, you don't have a running back. You didn't go out and sign Travis Henry. You didn't go out and sign, um, you know, Saquon Barkley or anything like that. You know, you guys suck. You know, uh, you needed to sign a veteran offensive lineman. At the moment, uh, yeah, I still think we might need to sign one just to have a swing tackle in case somebody gets hurt. But you have to look at and say the starting offensive line is gelling and getting there. And by no means, listen, it's still just preseason it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that you got out without injuries and i'm going to focus on the offense basically today um and i mean on this video i'll focus on the defense uh, later because it's just so much that's going on the question for you guys is do you feel better about what we potentially have on offense to me it's still the linchpin is getting cd's contract done and getting him in here because He is a game changer. If we can get CD in and get CD that we had last year, minus the playoff game, and we can get a running game and keep this offensive line together, and by no means do do we think that there's not going to be um, some problems. You know, that there's not going to be a learning curve when, when we got Cooper BB out there, you know, as a starter and things going against some of the top competition that he's going to miss things, that Tyler Guyton, when you're going against the Miles Garrett, that you're going to have bad plays. But you have a team that is definitely turning over. And so that's what I love seeing last night in this game. Uh, the offense definitely playing so much better 
than what they did before. The only thing I have as a concern here is that at the moment, Cooper Rush is your backup quarterback, that he only had three passes last night and only had one series last week. And you're doing yourself a disservice by not having that guy playing to get ready as well. Unless you are literally saying Trey Lance is now our number two quarterback. And maybe that's the case right there. And by the title of this video, is there a quarterback controversy? Maybe there is right now. But I want to go through and, um, of course, last night, Brandon Aubrey with the 66-yard field goal. You know, I'm going to do – I'm actually going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to do a video just on the kicker, but we'll get to Brandon Aubrey and the 66-yard field goal. You literally just saying that he, he can hit it from anywhere. But let's go to the tape here this morning and get a taste. From the haters. Boss, yeah, yeah. You talk about CD Lamb. Yeah, yeah, that brother. Yeah, yeah. You talk about Dak Prescott. Uh, 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 I, I, I believe I, I, he, he gonna be all right. He, he, he gonna be all right. That's what you do. That's what you do. Everybody else. Yeah. Let's go. Dak. Uh, 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 yeah. He, 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 nah, man, I ain't gonna let you talk about my man Jack like that, man. He, he, he gonna be all right. <laughs> Stephen A being Stephen A. Mm -hmm. uh, Damien, where do you rank Dallas in the NFC? Marley, I would say at, at, the, at their highest fourth. Like, this is a lesser team than last year. You know, when you look at it, they, they gotta replace a couple pieces on the offensive line. Who's the running back? They don't have a number two wide receiver. Like, defensively, I don't think they're going to be as good as they were last year. So when I look at the sum of all the parts with the Dallas Cowboys, the highest that I can put the Dallas Cowboys is fourth. And that might be doing, that might be giving them a, a little a, a favor. Because I don't think, that, I think this is a much lesser team than the teams we've seen go 12 and, you know, winning 12 games, I think three consecutive seasons. Mm. Nick? <laughs> Yeah, they've gone, they've won 12 and 5 the last three consecutive seasons, which is nothing to sneeze at. I think Damien's right. They are a lesser team than they've been. That doesn't mean that they can't have uh, as much or more success because we saw last year. I, I think we didn't anticipate Dak having the type of season that he ended up having. But the talent isn't gone from, from uh, the Cowboys roster. They've weakened on the offensive line. I think it's the biggest concern, but mm -hmm. they're still getting digs back. They still have in Lawrence and... They still have Lawrence as an incredible pass rusher and Micah Parsons as another incredible pass rusher. They still have the pieces to be one of the better teams in the NFC, but I do think they've taken a step back talents-wise. I would be less generous, but not by much. I think they're fifth or sixth best team in the NFC, but I do think that uh, depending on how they respond to mm -hmm. the answers that were presented in the playoff game to their offensive system, I think that was the biggest problem with the Cowboys was they didn't change things. They were kind of, we do what we do and it works. And then when they they got to a team that was game planning for the things that they were doing, they didn't have another answer. And whether you want to blame that on the coaches or on Dak or whoever, I'm not sure it matters. I know who Stephen A is going to blame it on because clearly it's going to be on Dak Prescott. But that seemed to be the issue for them offensively in the playoff game. Their defense was atrocious and, in, and offensively it seemed like the, the uh, Packers knew exactly what they were going to do and the Cowboys didn't have an answer for it. So I have them eighth and out of the playoffs. I think San Francisco is better. I think Philly's better. I think Detroit is better. I think Green Bay is better. I think the Rams are better. I think Seattle's better. And I think someone from the South is obviously going to get better. And I think you can put the conversation the that two teams hate. from the South are going to be just as good, if not better. I, I Okay, we have question marks at left tackle, center, right tackle, tailback, receiver outside of CeeDee Lamb, defensive tackle, inside linebacker, and Neek. You would know far better than I. And I know Trayvon's coming back, but I don't know what he's going to be like coming off of an ACL. Like, is he going to be that same guy? Is it similar to There's like a reason why I'm playing this season? I, I have no idea about that, but I do uh, – to expect him to just come back and be – who he was I, I, is, 
uh, rich, I guess. So uh, I think this team's got a lot of questions. I think it's one of the most competitive training camps that we have in the NFL because they have so many roster spots up mm -hmm. that they have to try to replace. I know some of the rookie draft picks, their fingers crossed. Hopefully those guys step in. But this is a football team that I have a lot of unknowns and question marks attached to more than I know them. I know Dak's going to play well. I know CD, if he's there, is going to be CD. I think Ferguson's an absolute superstar. But other than that, like, right. I don't know but a lot about this football team. I think, yeah, no, no, I don't, I don't disagree with you. But then a bunch of those other teams that you mentioned, they're big question marks with them too. And I would say we're beginning to get some of the answers for some of those questions that Dan Orlowski has. Apparently, the, the rookies are pretty good. We have some veterans that are there as well. Uh, inside linebacker, Overshone, pretty good. Diggs, so far in practice, looking pretty good. Um, all of the questions that he's asked and wanted an answer, seems like we're beginning to get some decent answers. Already good people, we will be doing our live stream with members at 5 o'clock today. 5 o'clock. So I hope you guys tune in. If you are a channel member, uh, the link will be in uh, the community tab. So definitely come in, check us out, and uh, be part of the conversation. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Peace out.